Hi there and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me Julian and today we want to talk about how to track outbound link clicks with Google Tag Manager and then transfer an event into Google Analytics. Before we get started, these little videos are as always brought to you by gtmtraining.com and if you are a complete beginner to Google Tag Manager, I've put together a five-day free email course which you can take at gtmtraining.com slash email course. Now back at our demo shop, we now want to track outbound link clicks. What are outbound links? So for example, on this page, I have links to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. And once I click them, we go out to another page. Now since I lose the user at this page to another other page, maybe a more resources page, I want to track these links and find out where are my users going to after they leave my page if they navigate on by clicking a link. And this will give me, and if I track this with Google Analytics, I would send an, an event and this would give me an event report. Like for example, here we have the event category outbound links. And as the action, we have the link that somebody clicked on. And as the label, I want to capture the page that the user clicked on this link. So how would we accomplish this with Google Tag Manager? Let's go through the steps. Let's start at the Google Tag Manager interface under triggers. We want to start building our new link click trigger. Let's click on new here and name it appropriately. As the event obviously we'll choose our click trigger and as the trigger type since we are talking about links here we'll go with the link click trigger. This will give us two more options here. The first option would be wait for tags which can be quite useful if you want to make sure that your tags are firing correctly before the user navigates on to a page where your Google Tag Manager code is not installed. So we can prevent the redirect for two more seconds in order for our tags to fire. And we have the option of check validation, which caters to the callback functionality of the link click and our trigger can register if the link was really clicked and the user was redirected on. So this, these two functionalities can come in quite handy, but if something is not working for you with your links, you might want to try to turn these options off just to see if that helps solve the problem. For now, we'll leave them on. Let's click on continue. And in the third step, we can now specify when our link click trigger should listen for any interaction with links. So should it only listen for it on one page or all the pages? Now the big advantage here is that we can deploy this on all the pages and not have to go through every individual link. So we'll go with the all pages trigger where the page URL matches the regex dot star. And this will deploy our trigger on all pages and listen for clicks. And once we go here on continue, in the fourth option, we can specify when our trigger should turn true and fire our event into Google Analytics. Now I'll keep this at all clicks for now because we don't know yet which of these filters we can configure here. So we'll keep this at all clicks now, but we will find this later. Let's save this trigger. And one of the important steps before we continue is to go to the variables menu and check all these checkboxes under the click variable menu here. So we have all this data available in our preview and debug mode where we'll go in right now. Let's go to preview and debug, go to our page and reload our page. And this will obviously give us our little debug console. And once we now click on one of these outbound links, and I'll do this with the command key pressed so it opens up in a new tab and persists our debug console. We'll see right now that there are some events in here which are the GTM link click. 
And once we click on them, nothing has fired yet because we don't have our tag attached to our trigger yet. But what it will give us is the capability to look into the variables and see what variables and what information is available once we click our link. And we have our activated variables, which are the click variables here. And we can see what information each link click has available here. Now the important part is we want to distinguish between internal links and external links because when I click on an internal link, it also fires a GTM link click. And we also have information available in the variables, but it differs from our other GTM link clicks. We have different information available and we can filter down and say that when we look at these different variables, the click URL is changing and external links have the property that the click URL doesn't contain any reference to our demoshop.com, which is our domain, but any internal links would have that reference in built into the click URL. So we can use this as a filter in our trigger. Let's go back to Google Tag Manager into our trigger. And now we can refine this trigger in the fourth option here to only turn true upon some clicks, which will run the evaluation if our click URL does not contain any reference to demoshop.com. And that way it will only fire when our click URL doesn't contain any reference to our internal site, but only when somebody clicks on an external link. Now let's save this trigger and attach our trigger to a tag. So let's go over to our tag menu, click on new, and this will be a Google Analytics tag, an event tag for outbound links. As a tag template, we choose Google Analytics. We have Universal Analytics installed and our tracking ID is already stored in a variable. So we don't have to type this in again. And as a track type, we want to send over an event. Now as a category, I'll choose outbound links. And the action we want to now dynamically fill with whatever link somebody clicked on. So we'll fill it dynamically with the click URL. And as a label, we also want to know which page this link was on. And we can do this by choosing the page path. And that way our action and label will be dynamically filled. Now the last option here is non-interaction hit, which we'll leave at false. So it will affect our bounce rate if somebody clicked on an outbound link. Let's continue this. And in the fourth step, choose our predefined trigger, which is our outbound link click trigger. Let's save this, create this tag and refresh our preview in debug mode. Let's head over back to our site, reload our page and click on our outbound link here. And we see that we have a event firing upon our outbound links here, which means our trigger works fine. If we do a negative test, for example, we click on an internal link, which results also, also in a GTM link click, we see that no tags have fired upon this interaction. So our click trigger is working and it is firing our GA event tag. Now to make sure that everything is working correctly, let's go over to Google Tag Manager and actually look into our real-time reporting under events to see if we have new events came in. We have here our outbound links and once we click into them, we can see that the action 
was dynamically filled and the label as well. So this all seems to work. To spin this to the end, you would go over to Google Tag Manager and publish this as a version to all your website visitors. And as of now, those outbound links would be tracked. And that's already it with this week's video of gtmtraining.com. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to find more out about Google Tag Manager, you can sign up to the five day free email course at gtmtraining.com slash email course. I'm Julian, till next time. So now let's get started with scroll tracking within GTM. And in order to, and what we'll do in this little tutorial is implement a custom HTML tag, which will basically act as our event listener in Google Tag Manager. And when somebody, now let's get started talking about bounce rate. So the bounce rate is often seen as this metric to evaluate landing pages. So does the traffic that hits my page actually stick around or leave the page? There's actually a little bit of a problem here with the bounce rate because the way that is defined in Google Analytics. Let's have a look. So bounce in.